when the Detroit Pistons signed forward Jeremy Grant to a three-year, $60 million deal in a sign-in trade with the Denver Nuggets this past offseason, media and fans alike questioned the move. Why would Jeremy Grant choose to take on a bigger and more difficult role as the number one option on a lottery team, when he could be a starter on a perennial contender in the Nuggets, playing alongside the dynamic offensive duo that was Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray? As we pass the halfway point of this season, it looks like Jeremy Grant was right to bet on himself. Grant has increased his scoring from 12 points a game in the regular season last year as a fourth option to 23.4 as a de facto leader of the Pistons. While the team has struggled, Grant has taken on the challenge of an increased load in stride and seen his name thrown around in conversations for most improved player. The question is, has he really taken his game to the next level or are his numbers only a result of being the first option on a bad team? Last season, with the injuries of Gary Harris and Will Barton, Grant saw increased playing time in the regular season and during the NBA bubble. In the playoffs, he saw his minutes increase from 26.6 a game to 34.4. The lineup of Murray, Harris, Grant, Millsap, and Jokic performed at a net rating of plus 5.7 over 212 minutes, with Grant proving his worth as a solid 3 and D forward. Defensively, he was often trusted to guard the opposing team's best wing player going from Donovan Mitchell to Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, and then finally guarding LeBron and occasionally AD. In an offense, Grant was mainly a spot-up shooter, along with being utilized as a screener and being on the receiving end of Jokic and Murray's passes as a cutter and from the dunker spot. This season, Grant has seen an increased volume, as well as shots with a higher degree of difficulty. Last year, per basketball reference, approximately 84% of his field goals were assisted, and looking at threes only, this jumped to 97.7%. He was above average as a spot-up shooter last year, especially from the four position, hitting from the corner, the wings, and even above the break. Through all games last year, Grant shot 37% from three, but this was mainly as a standstill shooter. In this play, he is parked in the corner, and as Harris penetrates, he kicks out to Murray, who makes an extra pass to find Grant. Here it is again, Murray with the initial drive. And as the Lakers rotate, the Nuggets once again find Grant, who sinks it from the wing. This trend has continued this year on the Pistons, with over 85% of Grant's threes being assisted. He actually leads the league in spotted possessions per game with 6.7. However, with an increased volume and less clean looks, his shooting percentage has dropped in these scenarios, from 35.3 to only 29.8, right around league average. Despite this, Grant has shown improvements in the variety of threes he has taken. The Pistons like running him off of handoffs, where he is able to shoot in rhythm. On this one, Holmes stays back on the handoff. And with Barnes choosing to go under the screen as well, Grant is free to take and hit the three ball. These are generally good shots, and although Grant hesitates and misses here, he is in the 67th percentile among 190 qualifying players on handoffs. The Pistons get a little creative on this play with Wright setting a screen on Grant's defender. Kyrie gets caught on the screen chasing him, and this is an easy look that Grant converts. In terms of creating his own three-point shot, Grant took only seven pull-up threes through 71 regular season games last year, and has already surpassed that mark this season, averaging just over one a game. He's shooting only 30.8% on pull-up threes, but he shows the ability to knock these down in rhythm. Grant comes off a curl on this one, and Crowder leaves him enough space after the switch we can pull up from the top of the key. Out of this pick and roll, Bobby Portis drops back, giving Grant a nice look that he misfires on. And in this mismatch against Gobert, he displays a simple yet effective step back move. One thing Grant lacks is the handle to shake defenders and create tons of separation. Instead, he tries to shoot over defenders. Late in the shot clock on this one, he gets blocked by Harden, forcing a well-contested three up. Still. The ability to take simpler one dribble pull-ups when he has the space is a decent move when Grant opts to switch things up. Moving into the mid-range, Grant has, as expected, increased his volume from this area of the court. With teams game planning for his penetration as well as three-point shooting, Grant has nearly doubled the percentage of his points from the mid-range, seeing an increase from 6.2% last season to just under 11%. He's had to create these looks for himself as well with the percentage of his mid-range shots being assisted dropping from 75% to 42%, according to basketball reference. On this pick and roll, the Bulls go over the screen with drop coverage, and Grant takes what the defense is giving them. 
Again, against drop coverage, Grant takes the open mid-range, although it might be more preferable to shoot the three here, or attack Thompson with a hezzy right as he pulls up. Grant gets another good look here by initiating contact and making space for the jumper. We saw this potential in the bubble last year. Against the smaller Caruso, he easily creates space and gets this one to fall. The Pistons calmly run a curl action and Grant has space to sink this one near the line. Coming off a curl into a handoff, Grant hits this open mid-range. Although again, he could make space with a lateral dribble and then shoot the three, which is a move a lot of elite shooters possess now. This curl floats into a pick and roll, and Grant does a great job keeping Kuzma on his back before hitting the jumper, something we didn't get to see much last year when he was on the Nuggets. Despite these examples, Grant is only shooting 36% from mid-range this season, and the inefficiency comes from times when he dribbles too much or takes tough, contested long twos. He has flashed the ability to make these difficult jumpers, but if he wants to dribble into pull-ups over LeBron, might as well do it from 3 instead of taking another step past the line and bricking this. On this one, Grant has space to pull from 3, but decides to take this questionable long 2. And versus the Celtics, Grant has the right idea of stepping back, a move that a star wing like Tatum is great at, but he doesn't go far enough and it's another inefficient shot. In this case of decision making, as Holiday slides over, the better play is probably throwing it to the wing where Wright is moving towards, but instead, he chooses to do this fall away that is blocked by Giannis. Grant also has a decent post game, especially from the right block, where he can attack mismatches and shoot these fadeaways over smaller defenders. He showed some of this in last year's playoffs. Here, he turns toward the middle and has a nice finish. Against Kuzma here, he makes enough space stepping back for the fadeaway and just unfortunately misses. From this season, it's the familiar turn towards the middle that Grant is comfortable with and hits. However, against stronger and better defenders such as Josh Hart, he can struggle to make space with his body. Against the Clippers last year, he's probably better off passing as George stays nearby to help, but instead he forces a tough jumper and it misses badly. In another clip from the bubble, he does a good job on the mismatch with Mitchell and draws the foul fighting for position. From this season, he's shown the ability to attack fronts as well, shedding Fox easily and finishing over Holmes. One thing last year was that he was careless at times from the post. Mitchell pokes this one away from his blind spot, and Rondo does the same here, timing his swipe with Grant's first dribble. This year, he's been a little more secure with the ball, but turns it over here when he's keeping the ball too close to his body. While Grant is around the 60th percentile on post-up possessions this year, I think it's best utilized only against smaller defenders, and he hasn't shown much improvement from last season. As a finisher, Grant excels and is one of the better ones in the league. He's great driving to the lane with a head of steam, attacking closeouts, running in transition, and also has a developing floater game. He's shooting 66% at the rim this year, down from 68% compared to last year, but this is partially due to the fact that he isn't being spoon-fed easy and open looks from a transcendent passer like Jokic and a star guard in Jamal Murray. Grant has always been a physically gifted player, and he's really been able to display that this year as a primary option with a number of dunks and finishes through contact. On this play from last season, Ingles lunges too far and Grant makes the defense pay. Here, Kawhi is a step behind navigating through the Plumlee handoff and Grant gets another dunk. This season, Plumlee and Grant have remained teammates, and he sets a screen here that frees Grant up for another slam. They do the same action here and it's another finish, this time over Aiton. Grant is excellent at utilizing his body mid-air bumping Capella to shield the ball and finish this. Later in the same game, he picks up speed going off the ball screen and just goes through Capella like he's not even there. He also has the ability to do off-timing layups, like this one going off his left foot with a lefty finish and one. He does the same thing on Johnson, and here switches it up going left and using the inside hand. Grant's aggression has contributed to his increase in free throw rate, from 30.9% last year to 35% this season and the percentage of his points being scored at the line has increased from 17.3% to 23.9%. Additionally, he's getting fouled on 17% of isolations and 12.3% of his drives. In transition, this jumps up to 26.1% of the time, 16th in the league and right behind players like Jimmy Butler and Giannis. He's also really stepped it up with his floaters this season. He struggled with these last year on the Nuggets, often rushing them or just looking awkward putting them up. This year, he just looks way more in control taking these shots, and he loves these right-handed floaters while going to the left. 
Here, Grant rejects the screen, and this is a clean look over Bogdanovich. Later in the game, he goes to it off the spin and gets the foul call. And guarded by Smart, he just rises up to flip this one in. He does get blocked sometimes on this shot, where he would be better off using the left hand. Again, Tice is on his right hip the whole time and swats this easily. He's clearly capable of finishing with his left hand like this one, where he tacks O'Neal on the closeout and gets the N1. But he is definitely weaker with the offhand and prefers using the right when possible. Grant has also remained great at putbacks and on cuts like he was in Denver. The frequency of these plays has decreased but Grant remains 70th percentile on putbacks. He was also 80th percentile on cuts last season but dropped to around 40th this year. However, this is more reflective of receiving passes from Plumlee instead of Jokic and playing on a worse team with sub-optimal spacing. He still has great positioning and timing, like on this play where he sneaks behind two defenders and draws the foul. If I had to make one complaint, it's that Grant could do a better job incorporating pump fakes into his game. Here he goes up immediately and gets blocked by Jalen Brown. Finally, we'll take a look at Grant's playmaking and his ability to create shots for his teammates. Here he makes the extra pass to the corner. And on this one in transition, Davis is forced to cover two players and Grant gets an easy assist. On this drive, Ingram steps in to help and Grant finds Jackson for the bucket. As the roll man, Grant is freed up and delivers a great laydown, midair for the dunk. Grant also has shown the ability to make plays out of the pick and roll, finding the lob with a nice delivery. On this one, he buys time by keeping LeBron on his back and Stewart is now in position to receive this pass. Here's another nice one where Stewart slips the screen and then converts. Working the screen here, Grant has the right idea of passing to the corner. But Bay cuts for some reason and it's an unlucky turnover. Off this handoff, Grant looks to drive first instead of anticipating Plumlee rolling. And after bumping off Collins, he gets the pass off a little late, but it still turns into a finish. On this one, he could fit a pass to Plumlee on the roll, but going hard to the hole isn't the worst alternative. Grant can sometimes struggle with more difficult deliveries like this one as three defenders collapse on him or here where he has nowhere to go and tries to get it into the corner. And sometimes Grant isn't aware of the better options like here where four defenders are around him and a pass to the corner might be better or when Curry helps in the case of a drive and there's a shooter one pass away. Still, most of the time Grant is able to find basic passes to the open man and is pretty good at making simple reads in the pick and roll. Overall, Grant has made big strides in several areas of his game. He has shown the ability to run the pick and roll as a ball handler and added a variety of finishes to his inside game. Considering his increased volume, as well as playing on a bad offensive team with poor spacing, the decrease in his efficiency is not too surprising. Grant isn't the player who can be the number one scoring threat on a championship team, Instead, he's best suited as a second or third option on a championship caliber squad, which would be a complete steal at 20 million a year. He definitely fits as the long-term option at the four for the Pistons, but as far as winning the most improved player goes, I think his increase in scoring is primarily due to his change in role and increase in shot attempts. Grant showed flashes of his skills in the bubble last year, but in my opinion, he hasn't quite added enough to his skill set and offensive back this year to win most improved. Instead, I think a player who has made the quote-unquote leap to stardom would be more deserving of most improved, such as Julius Randle or my personal pick, Shea Gilgis Alexander. If you like this video, please subscribe and leave a like and comment below and hopefully I can continue making more basketball content for a growing audience.